I mean, it's interesting, you know, when I think of myself as a, you know, when I invest my personal money, you would think that as someone who spends her life monitoring investments and making asset allocation calls, that I would be sitting around timing the market for my own investments. But I don't do that because actually, uh, you know, everybody gets busy. As hard as you try, you can't always be focused on all of your investments. And so I actually tend to uh, make, you know, generally get invested and allow active managers who spend all their time uh, monitoring the investments, make the decisions for me. Um, so I think it's important. Market has corrected, by the way. So obviously, valuations have improved relative to the beginning of the year. So I think one useful principle is when you see this kind of market volatility, edge back in, put some money to work, actually, I would say. At the beginning of the year, when we we're at market highs, I wouldn't have said that, but things have now corrected quite a bit. But then, as I said, it's actually very difficult, even for a professional investor like me, to time investments for my own personal money much better to get it invested, allow the active management, give, give the flexi have flexible active managers who can navigate the market for you, avoid the areas which are maybe under stress, look for opportunities through the volatility. Um, that's very much the way that I've always managed my own money. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and I think this is very much the St. James's Place ethos, which is that, as I sort of mentioned at the beginning, we are here to help you plan and navigate, uh, sort of plan for your financial future and navigate through the turbulent times. Um, in particular, I think sort of what we um, try to always be telling you through our partners is that you should be um, investing uh, really with um, that longer term view. Um, and I think sort of uh, we have some slides that you, you may have seen uh, us um, putting through. Um, what we have done our research have shown that actually for the last uh, 30 or so years where the, the markets have been actively um, uh, sort of uh, very liquid as a market and where we have the most I, I guess credible data what we generally have seen is that the stock market has has generally recovered from every conflict from every um, piece of uncertainty and the next slide will also show that there's probably more than uh, pl that there's plenty of times that where the market has dropped more than 10 percent in any given year but then has rebounded and just to put uh, uh, today's uh, uncertainty into perspective uh, we are pretty much at the the level of the sort of uh, MSCI acqui that is that we're seeing at December 2020 so obviously we've had some amazing ups um, but then uh, and then the market has sort of been correcting itself and from a from a man fund management perspective that's actually healthy for the market I guess to yeah. to weed out some of the bubbles So starting off with the yield curve, the challenge there was the two-year move very fast ahead of the actual level of rates. So I think the signal this time has been a little bit confused. And actually, we've been positioned for a steepening of that curve. Not getting too technical, but basically, we, we actually think that that flattening was overdone. So I wouldn't worry too much about the message from the bond market just yet. Mm. I don't think the bond market is signaling recession. I think we have uh, an increase in recession risks in Europe because the challenge we have here in Europe is that really the inflation we have is very cost driven, very much driven by these supply bottlenecks and upward shifts in commodity prices. And that's eating into the consumer's wage, wages. So we do have a bit of a recession risk here in Europe. And in particular, even the Bank of England has warned that that, that is a heightened risk for the UK in particular. The United States for this year, I'm still OK. I think that the, the nature of the inflationary pressure in the US is very much driven not just by supply bottlenecks and energy prices, but also by strong demand. And you are also seeing wages pick up quite nicely. They're not necessarily keeping up with inflation, but I think the US economy is still quite strong. So for now, I'm worried about recession risk in Europe, less so about the US. Ultimately, I think the Fed will have to raise rates quite aggressively, though. So again, that is a potential risk for 2023, and which is why I actually think that idea of maybe favoring the East over the West <laughs> might be a big theme for 2023. So first of all, with Japan, I mean, Japan tends to benefit obviously from weaker yen, which we've had of late. And it's been surprising that Japan hasn't performed better mm -hmm. given how cheap the yen has been, which should be boosting the performance of the exporters in Japan. I think that, so that's one reason maybe to look to Japan now, because it's lagged the benefit of a cheaper yen for its exporters. What's preventing us from getting overweight is really the concern that it also really needs a strong upswing in industrial production. Um, it is a market that has a high exposure to industrial cyclicals. And right now, I think that that's probably not the right environment. We prefer the sort of defensive value we get out of the UK rather than the cyclical value we get out of Japan. Mm -hmm. 
China is looking interesting. It's getting very cheap now. Um, so it's a market that we are looking at very closely. What's prevented us from getting more bullish is just obviously the short-term challenges uh, of, of the lockdowns. And I think for now, while they're, you know, they need to increase levels of vaccination amongst the elderly uh, to allow uh, maybe a move away from the zero COVID strategy. But for now, that is causing a bit of a challenge to growth in China. But I think it is screening very cheap. And particularly when we do our strategic work, uh, we find that on a 10-year view, um, a market that has repriced very significantly is, is China. So, so it is definitely on the radar screen in a way it hasn't been for us for a while. It could be interesting, I think, for 2023, because mm. we could be in an environment in 2023 where the West is slowing. Mm. And actually, as China emerges from the zero COVID policy and as it loosens policy, it could be in a very different phase of the cycle. So I think it's an interesting one for 2023, mm. definitely. Definitely.